Hello and welcome to the last in our first series of Sailor's Questions. It's a special one because we have with us Liz from Espa and follow the boat of course. The funny thing was we actually recorded this um, interview way back when, when we were in Thailand. And it was a beautiful video because you had the sound of the goats in the background and a fantastic setting in the lovely tropical foliage. Uh, there's just one problem. The wind completely ruined the recording and I've only just discovered this 24 hours before I'm supposed to get this up on YouTube. So we are quickly rattling this one off as it were back home in England. So the sound you're going to have to contend with on this little clip will be uh, more suburban aeroplanes, uh, dogs and the cars driving past. Oh, and occasionally the odd uh, banging from the neighbour next door doing some repairs to his fence. <laughs> okay, right, so... Elizabeth. Hello, hello, hello everybody. <laughs> hello, I'm here. Hello, Jamie. Oh, hello. And I didn't look at my previous answers, so this is off the cuff. Yeah, of course, you must remember that Liz set the questions. Um, yeah. When we recorded it last time, you had just set them, so yeah. I think uh, you're going to need some reminders. Yes, I can't remember them, so let's see. I'm... Let's see. Okay. Where would you most like to be right now? That is really easy and obvious. I want to be on Esper. I want to be in Thailand. I want to be in, um, yeah, in Thailand on the boat. And I'd like to be somewhere like Koh Rock or Co, one of the Koh Koh Kohs. On the Koh Kohs. Yeah, yep. yeah. Away from the English summer, which is cold and rain and noise. Yes, people. This is deceptive, isn't it? We've yeah. got this lovely sun now, which we may lose if we don't hurry this up, I guess. So yeah. stop you withering. Yes, yeah, right. Um, what soundtrack do you have when sailing? This is an easy one, and this is the one I'll never ever forget because this is a song that you introduced me to, and it's uh, the, um, the Ocean by Richard Hawley. Uh, whenever I see the waves, and when I'm on deck usually on my own and just looking over at the horizon I hear this particular track in my head uh, you and I don't really listen to music as we're sailing but we mm. have always both of us always have something going on in our heads musically and the ocean by Richard Hawley I just love it which is kind of ironic because when we are sailing what we want to listen to is is the ocean yeah in front <laughs> of the music yeah. okay what do you miss most about home not including family and friends apart from aeroplanes flying over well, um, yes it's um it's quite difficult that one uh, the obvious one is pubs and I have to say I've spent quite a lot of time in pubs mm -hmm. since we were back I think you had pubs as your answer so trying to be a little bit more original um, I think what I miss most is that as much as I love traveling and I love meeting new people and we have friends from all over the world there's nowhere quite like your own place for shared memories and shared culture and a shorthand way of speaking. You don't have to explain yourself and, and talk very carefully and slowly in words of one syllable. Mm. You come home and um, it's all there. There's shared memories and, and shared references. I think that's possibly what I miss, yeah. Yep. Does travel broaden the mind or does it reinforce old prejudices? Yeah, that was Mark Twain. And I think because it was Mark Twain, it's, he, he was right for him because he's a clever, he was a clever, um, open-minded, um, almost childlike man in his, in his innocence in many ways, in his humour and in his lust for life. And, in, 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 and I think that's really um, how I feel, um, that I, I'm, I'm always interested in something new and always want to find out about new things. And I think, yes, yeah, sure, it has to broaden the mind. But having said that, We've met a lot of people for whom travel doesn't seem to have made any difference at all. They've moved around the place and they've remained in their little tight bubbles, immune to what they see. Possibly that's part of it. You can look but without seeing. And mm. um, I think it should do, and I think it's something that everyone should do. What would your superpower be? My superpower would be something I've thought about for ages, and it kind of harps back to the earlier question about um, what you miss from home. And my superpower is very straightforward. I would like to be able to speak every single language in the world, uh, at least to the level I can speak English. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? I 
I don't ever want to grow up. Yeah, I don't, just to in, interpret that if you didn't understand. <laughs> something about having never grown up, I think. Yeah. Um, what's your favourite bit of kit on board yeah. and why? Well, it, I have a favourite piece of kit and it's fairly obvious, it's Millie. She's not kit, doesn't she's she, crew. Okay, she doesn't count as kit. Um, Oh, there's too many things to choose. There's too many things to choose. I love my new office. That's a, that's a room. Um, I think, although it's not working at the moment, I hope one day it will work again, is the water maker, because the water maker allows us a, a real freedom. It allows us not to have to go anywhere where there's civilization. It allows us, wherever there's reasonably clear seawater, to make our own water. And we can last for weeks on end making our own water with the basic supplies. So probably the water maker. Next question, if you could go back in time, where would you go? Oh, oh I set this question, I can't even think of an answer. Um, would it be back to when the water maker was working? <laughs> yeah, that would be a good time. Um, well, when I set this question, I didn't necessarily mean in one's own lifetime, although I know a few of the people have answered that. So I have always thought that it would be quite interesting um, to live in the 20s when women started to feel a bit more emancipated and the shirts got shorter and the music was great and there was a lot of partying going on. But of course, like anything, you'd have to be in the middle to upper classes with plenty of money to enjoy it. Mm. So, um, yeah, the 20s would be quite fun. What's your favourite anchorage? Mm. Oh. I haven't got one favourite one. I haven't got one favourite one. My most uh, favourite anchorage recently, in the last couple of years, is Co Rock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Co Rock. We've written about Co Rock and uh, talked about Co Rock a lot, but it's the most beautiful anchorage in Thailand. And in fact, if uh, you're watching this on YouTube and you've watched this, uh, you're watching it shortly after this has been published, if you look at the banner on our YouTube page, that is Co Rock with Liz walking along the beach on a desolate beach with Esper anchored in the background. Yeah, we were lucky because we went off season so there was nobody else there. Mm. Uh, but even in season, it's not a tourist a spot, it's a day trip a spot. But if you've got your own boat, you can get there in an evening. It's very quiet, I believe. Can I just remind you, when, when we did this last time, yeah. actually your favourite anchorage you said was Sadler Island in the Red Sea. Yeah, of course it was. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, but I did just say that that was my most recent favourite anchorage. Yes. The Sadler Island in the Red Sea is uh, something to behold. It is completely remote. Um, nobody lives on it. Uh, we found it by pure chance. And um, the thing about it was that on one side you had quite uh, big waves coming into a huge shore. Um, there were, there were, it was volcanic. There were shells everywhere. There were sharks in the water and in incredible um, coral. And, and turtles. On, yeah, on the other side we saw nesting turtles. Uh, there were ospreys. ospreys. We were able to sit right next to an osprey nest and watch the ospreys come in and see the chicks. And peculiarly, four graves. Yeah, there was four, yeah. four simple graves. Very odd. Yeah. Very odd that was, but it was um, fantastic and unusual. Yeah. Okay, so perhaps. We could grant you one wish and take you back there. But uh, if I can grant you one wish on behalf of Follow the Boat, what, what would the uh, wish be? That we never had to do any maintenance because we had a boat that was self-maintaining. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's been the highlight of your adventure so far? Apart from meeting me, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, rescuing turtles. When we, we had a pretty disastrous time trying to get out of um, the, the Maldives and we were going to go south to Chagos, but it all went wrong. We ended up having to go across the Indian Ocean and ended up in Malaysia. And along the way, we lost the, uh, the not the water maker, the uh, wind. I think we lost our minds. Yeah, we lost we? our minds, we lost the wind, we lost our steering. Uh, we had no auto, uh, no, sorry, we didn't lose our steering, we, but we lost our autopilot. Uh, our wind vane, so we had to hand steer everywhere. Um, it was very hard and it was a very difficult journey and we lost a lot of weight as well. Mm. And during the middle of it all, we came across some turtles that were caught in fishing lines and it was 35 plus knots of wind. Um, storm waves, was coming in, waves, yeah, storms. dolphins all around and these poor turtles were caught in lines and we managed to turn the boat 
And we rescued them, we cut them out of the line, and that was a, a moment that I'll never forget. Yeah, uh, I can't remember if I did I answer that in my one, but... Uh, you I, may have. Uh, even if I didn't, I think you've reminded me that is definitely the most memorable experience. But finally, what next? What next? What next is that uh, we're both going back to Thailand pretty soon. We're going to get back on Esper. We're going to do some sailing, providing weather lets us. And uh, we're going to just enjoy being back on Esper. And making more films. Hmm. And just enjoying the life that we didn't have for a year because we were in a boatyard. And now we can really enjoy it again and get to know Thailand a bit better. Let's get away from these bloody aeroplanes yeah, as well. Yeah, aeroplanes and cars. Mind you, I will be on an aeroplane in a few days yeah. to get back to Thailand. Yeah. Well, Elizabeth, thank you very much. This is your life. That's a little in-joke for you kids of the 60s and 70s. <laughs> um, so this is the last, last one we've done in this season. And the, and the reason why this is the last one is simply because we don't meet enough people to sit down with and do this interview. But, um, and the other thing is we really just did it as a fill-in, didn't we? It was a fill-in because we were only putting out videos once every other week. We thought we'd do something a little different and been very pleasantly surprised with the response it's got. It seems to go down pretty well with uh, you guys out there in um, internet land. So we will hopefully line up more interviews for another series. Won't yeah, we? I think as we go back to Thailand and we start meeting more people while we're sailing, we're inevitably going to meet some interesting characters and we will bring them along and yeah. um, we'll talk about their boats as well as people have asked us to we'll talk about their boats and we'll get them to answer the questions yep and if you can think of any other questions yeah by all means of course you know we like this whole interactive thing we love uh, reading your questions and answering them on youtube and facebook and email and all that all that uh, stuff so get in touch yeah let me know if you have any other ideas or questions and we'll do a different set of questions for the next uh, for the next round yeah that's a good idea okay well that wraps things up just before we go we have a brand new trailer for our patreon and youtube campaign and here it is hello we are liz and jamie and we live on a boat with a cat <laughs> We're telling our story through video. From the highs, look at this little piece of perfection. Yeah. It's really good. Uh. To the lows. I'm getting pissed off because there's stuff going on over the fucking boat. Well, what are we waiting for then? I don't really fancy sailing out into the lightning and it's completely solace. Well, we're not going to go anywhere until this starter motor is sorted. We don't sugarcoat it, we let you in on all the problems and disappointments as well as the good stuff. So what's this Patreon all about then Jamie? Patreon is a place that people can go to to support the kind of art that they like. It's a place where you can give your artists a pat on the back. So if you like the stuff we make you can support us on Patreon by pledging a small amount each time we upload a video. And in return, you get exclusive access to footage that's only available on Patreon. As well as postcards, photos and calendars. Even T-shirts. And how about a week on Esper? And we promise we won't make you do any boat maintenance. Here's how it works. Have a look at our Follow the Boat page on the Patreon website. Sign up and pledge an amount for each video we produce. It's a bit like leaving a tip at the end of a good meal. This can be as little as $2 a video. Each time we upload a video, Patreon does the work and your pledge is automatically sent to us. Don't worry, you can cap the amount you spend each month. So if we bring out 10 videos in one month and you've pledged $2 for each one, you don't have to end up with a $20 bill. You can set a monthly limit of, say, $2, or $4, or $100. That's what's so great about Patreon. It's flexible. By the way, we average two videos per month, sometimes more, sometimes less. If you like what we do and feel like giving us a thumbs up, that'll be great. And we promise that we will spend the money on improving our videos. 
But if this isn't for you, don't worry, because our content will continue to be free and available on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching the video. Fair winds. Hope to see you soon. Follow the boat. Follow the boats. Follow the boats. Follow the boats. See you in the boat. Follow the boat. Follow the boat. Follow the boat.